So hello and welcome to my first Ableton tutorial. Uh, please give me any feedback in the comments about uh, how I've gone about this tutorial, what you want to see more of, less of, explaining, etc, etc. If you uh, subscribe to me on Patreon, uh, you can download this patch uh, there once I've put this video up. Let's begin by showing you the sort of direction that we're heading today. We're going to make something that sounds a bit like this. It's a uh, random melodic fragment generator that will continue generating new melodic ideas uh, for as long as you want it to. And it sounds a bit like that. Of course, you don't have to use it with that particular sound. You can use any sound you want. You don't need me to tell you that. Uh, so I'm going to delete this and we're going to start from scratch. So let's bring in some kind of instrument so we can hear what's going on. Uh, let's just just use operator for this. Uh, I've got I've got a MIDI keyboard plugged in here. I'm only going to press C3 is the only key I'm allowed to press during the entire making of this tutorial. That's what that sounds like. Let's make it a nice sawtooth wave because I like saw sawtooth for something like this. And we'll turn the cutoff down a bit and a bit less attack. Okay. That's a good place to start. So now we're going to be exploring chance and randomness uh, within a musical context with this patch. So the first thing I want to do is create a random note anytime I press that uh, C3. So we're going to use the random plugin, chance at 100%. So 100% of the time it's going to rate, generate a random note. It can go 12 up or 12 down by increments, in this case of uh, one semitone. Uh, a half note in this instance would be 12 up and 12 down of two semitones or a whole tone. Uh, so this will create a whole tone scale, uh, a diminished scale, etc. etc. Let's keep it at uh, chromatic. I'm going to set it to bi directional so it can go both above and below the C3 input. So as you can hear now, each time I press C3, it's generating a random note. Let's just open this up a little bit more. Um, I want this to feel quite musical, so I'm going to quantize uh, those notes into some kind of a scale. Uh, in this case, let's just use the C major scale because that's easiest. Um, so as you can hear, those notes are now all in uh, the key of C major. Now, uh, here we begin to bring in a bit more randomness. Uh, I'm going to use Ableton's note echo which is basically a delay, but for MIDI, it uh, functions basically like a delay, but for MIDI, I don't know how else to describe it. Um, and I'm going to control it using Ableton's expression control. Now, what this does is anytime it receives a MIDI input, a note, uh, you can tell it to send output values to anywhere that you want to map them. Uh, and you can send output values according to the velocity of the input, mod wheel, blah, 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 all of these lovely things here. I'm going to go with random. Uh, I'm going to de disable the sync here because I want it to feel kind of free-flowing and off the grid. And I'm just going to connect that randomness to the delay time here so that now every time I press a new MIDI note, the length of the, the delay time is changing. I'm going to bring the feedback down a little bit in this. And in fact, I'm actually going to connect a random to that feedback. Why not? But I want that to go from really quite low. I don't want so much variation on that feedback. Uh, and let's constrain this a little bit as well so we don't ever get super short or super long. Excellent work. So we now have a situation where I press C3, or C3 is pressed. Uh, the note is random, it's turned into C major, and then, but also we're randomizing how many duplications of that MIDI event happen and how far apart they are. Now we're going to use all of this information to generate melodies. So, uh, what I'm going to do is basically uh, bring in uh, another, we're going to bring in another randomizer so that this will now randomize not every note that comes from C3, but this randomizes every MIDI note that comes out of this note echo. We're going to set the same 
values. No, we're not. We're going to say we only want to go sort of seven semitones, so a fifth up and a fifth down. I'm trying to imagine somebody actually playing it with their hand. Uh, and that's about as far as you can reach. Stretching, I don't know, something like that. Uh, so now I press... Uh, So you hear this is generating all of these uh, new notes based on the echoes that are coming out of here. Again, we want to quantize that. We want to keep it all in C major. So now we come back in here. Uh, and we're going to bring in another note echo because this is, uh, if you've ever seen any of Adam Neely's fantastic tutorials, you'll know that repetition legitimizes. Repetition gives us a musical context for something. Uh, so let's bring in this. And in this case, I'm going to have the, uh, the delay time quite spread apart so it can feel like little fragments that are getting echoed. Uh, let's see how that feels. Lovely. And so you kind of get this almost Steve Reich type phasing idea as notes come in and out and these little melodies are created by the interaction of the um, notes as they're being echoed. Uh, now, uh, one thing about musical phrases, of course, is the notes are not always the same velocity. So let's bring in a little bit of randomization of the velocity into here as well. And I want to put this in here I think because I, this is what's generating the repeat of each phrase uh, and so yes I want to bring the velocity in here let's change these so we can randomize it and the input velocity doesn't matter this is set to unity input velocity and I'm going to randomize it so it looks as if it's between sort of 30 and 90 on the velocity scale of course going from 0 to 127 And let's connect that velocity with a few things over here. So let's make it much more connected with the amplitude. Let's connect it perhaps with the time over here. So the louder it is, it does a bit more of that. Can we connect it with the free with the cutoff of the free? Here we go. Yes, lovely. Let's connect it there. Lovely. Okay, this is all sounding kind of how I want it to sound. We're in the right realm. Now I want to create a situation where let's uh, now stop me from pressing the key and let's actually make a, an instance of a event being triggered and let's make it every two bars. Um, and I want to make it so that it doesn't always create this little phrase. Like sometimes it just plays the note with a couple of echoes. Uh, so what I want to do for that is come in after here. So I'm going to group all of these. Command G. Uh, and let's call that phrase gen. Uh, I'm going to create another chain. It's going to be called dry. And the, the way I'm going to choose between these is uh, by using a chain selector. So uh, let's set it to do the phrase generation thing, sort of around half, a little bit under half, and that one to go there. Uh, I'm going to map the chain selector to a macro here. And then I'm going to, surprise, surprise, connect that macro to a random here. So now every input uh, that happens up here, it's, it's saying phrase, generate the phrase, generate the phrase, generate the phrase. And now the input, now we're just getting a little delays and the, and the uh, phrase is sort of continuing on the top. That's quite nice. Now I want to create a further situation where this one patch is also going to generate its own bass lines. Uh, so what I'm going to do is again divide the MIDI information here. 
So let's group all of you. And we're going to call you random plink. Now I'm going to use another operator. We're going to call this bass. And at the moment it's just duplicating everything that's happening up here. Um, but we're going to change a couple of things. We're going to first of all select things according to the, the key, the actual note that's being pressed. And we're going to say that everything below G2 is going to go to the bass. Everything from G sharp to A flat 2 is going to go to the possible random plink plonk. Um, the bass under here, we're going to make those notes nice and long. So we're going to turn up the K time here. Uh, and we're going to make them nice and deep. So I'm actually going to pitch them down an octave as well. And even down another octave here. Uh, now it's not often generating stuff that's down that low. What if we increase these choices? Still didn't get down there. Come on. There we oof, oof, that's deep. <laughs> Maybe that's a bit too deep. So let's bring you back up. There we go. Ah, that's lovely. Let's give it a bit more release whenever that happens. Turn this up nice and long. And I'm going to make this bass a monophonic so we don't get sort of funky bass chords happening down the bottom there. But whilst I'm at it, I'm going to make this guy up here perhaps uh four voices so there's a little bit a little bit less chaos stuff happening i'm going to put a reverb after mr plink plonk because reverbs make plink plonks sound nice Let's do a little bit more something on the bass. I want it to feel a little bit more like it's wobbling a little bit. So, how am I going to do that? Uh, let's do it using an LFO tool. Let's just map you onto here. Not quite going that high, thank you very much. There we go. Oh, that's nice. Um, so yeah, there you have it. That's kind of the patch. I'm going to show you a couple of other things now that I've done to make it a bit more performative. Um, so first thing, I'm just going to group all of this. so that I can add some macros. Now, what things might be handy to have on a macro? Well, I think perhaps the cutoff of this plinkety plonk uh, operator. So in order to connect that to the main macros over here, I need to do this high G, I need to do a little bit of pre-macroing. So first of all, this map frequency cutoff to there. And then I can connect that how do I access it there? Uh, yeah, no, the wrong macros. I want to map you over here. Aha, yeah, of course. Uh, so now I turn on map here, you and you. And let's rename that. Uh, same thing I'm going to do with the reverb over here. So let's map the decay size of the reverb and maybe even the dry wet of the reverb over here. Uh, and now I have to do that here again. Decay size, uh, the dry wet. Of course, there's other things that are handy to have as um, 
as macros uh, you can decide what you want depending on what kind of sounds you want to use for it you don't need me to tell you that you're autonomous human beings um, but yeah that's the basic idea behind this patch generating self uh, self-fulfilling melodic fragments um, hope you've got something out of this uh, hope you enjoy going away and making various kinds of plink plonk sounds um, obviously I didn't do too much work on the sound design here there was just much more about the concept of generating the notes um, so please forgive me for that as I said if you subscribe to my patreon uh, you'll be able to download this patch there uh, many more things incoming lots of ideas I have for these kinds of videos as I said my first one so please give me any feedback on how I've gone through the process and the thoughts behind everything uh, yeah there you go